How amazingly beautiful are those patterns, don't you think? And how about those proofs? Fantastic! Anyway, those two patterns look very similar and the two proofs were also pretty much identical. Now, doesn't this suggest that these patterns form the start of an infinite sequence of similar infinite patterns? An infinite pattern of infinite patterns. That'd be cool, right? Well, just on top we're adding consecutive integers, then squares, then what? Well, cubes of course. What do you think? Is this going to work? Well, let's have a closer look. What would the first equation for the cubes pattern look like? Well, obviously something like this. a cubed plus b cubed equals c cubed with a, b and c being positive integers. Mm, actually, <laughs> that doesn't look good at all. As all mathology regulars will know, this is actually impossible. Fermat's mega famous last theorem named after the 17th century mathematical superstar Pierre de Fermat tells us that this equation does not have any positive integer solutions a, b, c. So there won't be any nice pattern for cubes. In hindsight, maybe not that surprising. Remember what makes things work, for example for the squares, was this ingenious reassembly of a square into a shell for a larger square. There. The counterpart for cubes just doesn't work out. Therefore the nifty construction to work in 3D would expect having to create six equal slices, but those six slices don't fit nicely around the six faces of a smaller cube. Anyway, cubes are out. And actually much more than cubes is out. Fermat's last theorem also says that even if we replace the threes in the exponents by any other integer n greater than two, the equation a to the power of n plus b to the power of n equals c to the power of n won't have any solutions with positive integers a, b and c. Hmm. So there goes our sweet dream of an infinite pattern of infinite patterns. Very sad. Well, on the bright side, not having that mega pattern makes our two patterns extra special. There! Extra special! Actually there's a way to make both patterns even more special. I've known about these patterns for most of my life and I always felt that there was something missing at the top of both patterns, right? Shouldn't there be something there? Well, while preparing for this video I had another really close look and I came to the conclusion that it would make sense to extend the patterns like this. So 0 equals nothing at the top of the first pattern and 0 squared equals nothing at the top of the second pattern. Bit weird. But don't the patterns now look much more complete? And behold, <laughs> two very festive looking trees just in time for Christmas. To finish things off for today, here are three nice puzzles for you to ponder. Each of these puzzles hides a nice aha moment and so don't skip them. First puzzle. If the cubical pattern actually had worked out, what would the first a cubed plus b cubed equals c cubed equation have been? Okay, okay, we already know that the two sides of that would-be equation won't be equal. However, what exactly is the difference between the two sides? Nice little surprise waiting for you there. Record your answers in the comments. Second puzzle. Over there is the 1895 painting by Nikolai Bogdanov Belsky entitled Mental Arithmetic in the public school of S. Rachinsky. Can you solve the problem on the board in your head in under 30 seconds? What's the answer? And what's your strategy for attacking this problem? Again, leave your answers in the comments. Final puzzle. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. How about 3 cubed plus 4 cubed plus 5 cubed equals what cubed? What about the next sum in the sequence? Be surprised and leave your answers in the comments. Anyway, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this somewhat unusual mythology video.